Hello everyone, welcome to Scorpion Winter Studio Games, and this is my new project called The Island. I've been working on this game project for about a year, trying to learn the Unreal Engine and understand how everything works together. Not only that, but also understand how much my computer can handle on the performances side for creating video games like this. Now, this particular scene right here is been in development for the past two months, and I didn't really put too much time into it since I've been really, really busy. I haven't posted anything in the past two months, and the reason for that is due to this big change. The game has been changed drastically, but it's temporary and for good reasons. Uh, one thing is that I've learned how much my PC can actually handle on the developer part side when you create video games. But the good side is Unreal Engine 5 is coming out that will help with certain performance issues that I've had in the previous project and that will help me in this one. But also will give me some time to actually focus on something small easy to set up, uh, test anything that needed for game development, and then build from there and add more sections, more landscapes, more islands, more ev everything. So trying to go a little bit smaller on this project and then build up, rather than trying to tackle everything at once on a large scale that is just wasting my time when it's not fully ready to set everything into the world at once. So, therefore, everything has been downsized so that way you guys can watch it from the beginning on how it's done, how I do it, and what I have learned in the past year or so. And using some of the tools that's available on Unreal Engine, paid or free, you can create your own scenes like this. And this is currently still under development, and a lot of stuff that's going to be fixed and added and changed, but I figured this will be a good starting point to introduce this new series to you, so that way you guys can follow along, or at least watch and see the progress of development of all of this level for this project. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so it's going to be about 30 minute video, so hopefully I can cover enough information. Let's go ahead and create a new landscape and you can see that over here on the left side you have a different amount of quads that you can uh, choose for your landscape size and if you're to go 15 by 15 you can see that the resolution here gives it 121 by 121 which uh, is about a total of 64 components and that gives you an approximation of how much of a landscape can you build. Now here I'm using the L3DT wizard program and I'm going to create a uh, world size 121 by 121 however it's not gonna let me do it because it's uh, too small and the minimum requirement is 256 by 256 which uh, brings my landscape to a little bit of a bigger size but again, right here you can uh, play around with different components and see how big of a landscape you would like to create. You can also obviously import from file. My landscape is going to be at the horizontal scale of 8. I'm actually going to leave it at 10, but I'm going to have it at 256 by 256. So I'm going to change my average altitude a little bit more closer to the sea. Altitude range closer to flats scale different f features we're going to do a little bit of more of a vast noise a little bit higher noise sharpness fractal a little bit less cliff and ter terrace erosions and then rivers and once you create everything that you're looking for so here is a quick demonstration that shows you if you go on a 3d view that here i've created a island landscape or the program did and the darker areas, darker blues, are your 
height variations. So anything that's lighter weight is higher ground, and anything that's darker is lower ground. And then you'd want to do is export your map. I'm going to do file format R16. I'm going to call it the island. And I'm going to choose the location where I want to save it at. And over here, I'm going to import the file. Uh, here's my file. And here's a preview of it. Now, of course, I'm going to scale mine down to about size 20. So from 100% to 20 on the Z value. And now you can see how large your landscape is compared to your character. And this is the minimum size of landscape you can create using L3DT, which is a free program that you can use to create landscapes of your desire and imaginations. However, this landscape is way too large for my development that I am trying to create a more of a flatter surface island, at least for a testing purposes. I'm trying to keep slopes to a minimum since this is going to be one of the smallest islands that you'll be starting the game on. And as the game gets developed, we'll have much higher ground and bigger mountains. So you will probably get rescaled. But the first thing, I'm going to go ahead and drop in my MI landscape to the landscape itself using the Brushify IEO. And as you notice over here, I have all of my vegetation still saved from my previous videos. If you haven't seen them, check out my other playlist. Here's all of my new materials. There's actually 81 of them. And I was also informed and told not to really go crazy on this and not use that many on the landscape, which that's what something that you do actually want to avoid uh, using on your actual layer because your compile shader will not compile if you have too many of them and you kind of have to sit down and calculate all that stuff. So that was my previous issue with my other landscape, but once you choose a desired color that you want for your landscape, it will populate the entire landscape with that color. And I'm going to go ahead and choose Send the Breeze to start off outlining the top of my island. I want to create a section where I'm going to have palm trees. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my ocean back so I can see it. And again, some of the stuff that I've sped up, or pretty much the entire video is sped up between four to like eight times, I believe, in certain spots because it's just repetitive movement, but it um, might be a little bit disorienting for you guys if uh, it seems like it's going a little bit too fast. But pretty much what I'm doing here is trying to smooth out all the areas here. Yeah, not smooth out, but uh, paint over with the sand debris and it takes some time to compile the shaders for it but uh, once it's compiled you can uh, freely paint anything that you desire and you can see that there is some repetition in the ocean itself and that's something that I'll have to look in later but as of right now I'm gonna paint this over and if as I zoom out you can see that the actual texture changes uh, repetition you can see the farther you go away this can be changed and I think I'll get into that later as well showing you how to do it but as of right now it's all right and since it's going to be all in first person you won't be that high up to see the ground anyways but the idea here is to get a basic understanding of what you're trying to create and I will be using landscape layer materials to populate it with some vegetation. So the second one I have here is Send the Breeze and one thing is interesting about it, it's a different color than my original Send Dunes. The pattern doesn't really match but I'm going to fix this later. As of right now I'm going to 
paint everything that I think that will be covering the landscape section. And once I'm done with that, now I can start smoothing out my island shoreline so that way I don't have strange corners around it and I figured I will have certain locations that have sand shore on and some of the stuff is going to have more of a cliff formation with stones, cliffs and corals but I will smooth out the entire area of this island so that way it has a better and smoother transition. Next time I'm going to reduce the scale size of the island on the z value from 20 to 10 and now you, my ocean is a little bit higher than my landscape total height and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to fix it at the z value of 1526 now maybe later down the road I'll level everything back to zero and that's something that I also need to keep in mind if I were to do that you can either uh, bring in your landscape to that height or just remember the value of your ocean because I will be basing a lot of stuff later into development where the shoreline is and that is going to be for seashells uh, spawning of different type of trees at which height so when you are creating let's say a tropical landscape this is something that you probably want to keep in mind of where everything will be spawning at which height variation which layer you want to be using for which foliage type and things like that so using MI landscape from Brushify is very useful to create different type of environments simply by hand painting the entire landscape and I will do a quick demonstration of seaweed to just show you what the ocean is going to look like as well since I've been able to paint a little bit of the mainland of the tropical landscape I'm going to go ahead and add four different seaweed types and you can see that I have some procedural foliage types here for procedurally generating some of the meshes that I have. So this one is going to be the seashell. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up to 500 or 500 and 250 and see how big this box actually is compared to my level. And you don't want to go too crazy on this, so definitely downsize if you're not using it anywhere in that area so we can reduce the z value to 50 instead of 250 as long as it's a desired height and location where you want certain things to spawn and make sure you uncheck certain marks you don't want to use in this example i'm only using allow landscape only and if i were to go underwater you can see that now there are seashells are spawning and I've actually have a video on this as well on how to do it so if you're new to this welcome to the channel but if you haven't seen on how I've created this you can check it out on the playlist again of setting up those seashells and some starfish in the ocean there's a whole tutorial on that as well but we're gonna be changing a lot of stuff from the previous videos as well. There's going to be uh, different height variations for some of the static meshes that I have here listed, which is the starfish is going to spawn much deeper in the ocean and any seashell that's above the ground surface that's so high up is only going to spawn so far from the shoreline so that way it has a limit on the height. And I'm going to go ahead and copy the height of my ocean and find all the foliage types that I have for my seashells and they are in different projects 
in different folders. So some of them over here, the height maximum, I'm going to change from 1526 to 1530. So we have a little bit of that extra height that it can spawn above the shoreline. And the starfish actually going to spawn way below, so at around 1350. You'll have to go farther down to find them. Same applies to some of these seashells. I believe there is 40. Okay, so there's 40 other seashells that I have in this procedural generation. We're going to also change this to 1530. Well, you know what? Let's do a little bit more of a variation at 31. So that it's a little bit higher than the other 10 that I have. But again, that can all change later depending on how high they actually spawn from the shoreline. And uh, these starfish are going to spawn somewhere lower. And we're going to go ahead and just re-simulate this. That's uh, one cool thing about the procedural foliage, that you can just quickly save it, and you just have to update it once you have done some changes. It's not a live update, so you have to select your procedural box and re-simulate this and we're going to witness most of them disappear from the shoreline since they're no longer belong there and just like that I've removed most of the starfish from above the ocean and left some of them on the shoreline and again I'm going to have to smooth more of the shoreline and add another procedural box of seashells probably with the much more seashells where the ocean wave comes in and breaks you know, underwater and maybe even above the surface so but now it's set up a little bit more right in a way where I want them to spawn so you can still use this material layer or the landscape layer should I say and nothing will spawn on it because it's going to be above the height that you've set up. But uh, there's no longer starfish appearing at the higher ground. They're a little much lower, so there's one right here. Uh, but they do cut off at a certain height, which was uh, 1,200. So you won't really find any closer to the shoreline. Now, of course, it does occur in real life where the starfish gets washed ashore, but uh, they tend not to hang around that area on their own willingly but they do tend to stay close to the bottom of the ocean and again some of these seashells i'll have to increase the amount well, on the shoreline itself when the water comes in and out it brings in the seashells and out so it's something like that I have to pay attention to as well when i create a tropical landscape so i'm going to increase the amount of it of the, the height so that way it spawns a little bit higher but this will do for now because there's going to be other materials that's going to get painted on. So this is just a an addition to our dunes landscape that we have, and it will remain there on that layer. Next, I'm going to do the sand debris that we just painted here. So let's go ahead and. Move this on the side so that way it's a little bit easier to scroll through some of the stuff that we currently have. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one, which is called Grass 01. And this is gonna be simply my jungle outline where I'm gonna have the heavy, dense jungle spawn in this uh, section that I'm painting with. And it's pretty much and uh, that dirt or dead grass, for let's say, with some really dark dirt patches. And the idea here is to create a blend between a really light color sand with the really dark dirt, which is going to take some time and other layers in between to create what I'm looking for. But again, I'm selecting certain sections where I picture some of these trees spawning since they're going to be heavily dense I have to make sure I account for 
the spacing uh, for where the character is going to be walking around and trying to build certain structures not only that but how the landscape would actually look like if the vegetation was really present on this island so that's one of the main components is trying to visualize what you're trying to create now of course i do recommend starting with stones first uh, and for fortunately i've been spending quite a lot of time with foliage itself so i'm just going with what i already have and the rocks i'll just have to get in later as i build the game but uh, it's pretty simple to start with the rocks first i think and much easier than doing the trees first however when you do place your trees and at least you'll know where your rocks go so you can kind of go in any direction i think but uh so far i've only been uh, putting the foliage grass and trees onto the landscape before placing trees and at least in this series you'll see me do that first and that is due to the fact that i already have stuff but here i'm uh, changing all the heights for the heavy dense jungles you can see that this is a previous height on the heavy jungle procedural box and once I re-simulate and set it up to the height that I want it, which is above the ocean level, it is no longer spawning anywhere else but there. So if you want to use that some, for some reason underwater, it will not spawn there. Uh, but you can still paint that layer. And we have some pretty big trees. They do come with a very strange dark shadows, but uh, hopefully we can fix that. And over here, I'm going to change the height. So the minimum is going to be at 1550, uh, a little bit higher than the ocean level. And the, the rest of the height does not really matter since it's not going to affect us. It's a pretty high number. And doing the same thing for the palm tree. And I think I'm going to use that send debris to spawn it on the palm tree beach. And again, the location is pretty simple. I'm all I have to do is just use my heavy jungle procedural box to copy the scale parameters and my location for my palm tree beach. And I'm gonna reapply the same functions. I click re-simulate and now uh, here's my result. <laughs> Looks like I got quite a lot of palm trees a lot of repetition of the same kind of, of the tree. You can see that they have different height variations. This is something that is a set up for the procedural generation. Uh, they are were very well performed and set up in a way for being deep into the ground on the Z value. So this is something that's very important for all the meshes. When you set up a different angle height variations. So keep that in mind. But here I'm trying to reduce the amount of palm trees that's going to generate be generated by this procedural box. And you start noticing that there's now much less trees, but still does not look natural. It looks very unrealistic and repetitive. But that is due to the fact that I only have a couple of trees for this uh, procedural foliage box. And we'll expand this as we build on but as of right now the idea is to put in whatever we have the foliage amount of type that we have and trying to create a more realistic feel with what we have and i'll build on to all of them as i add more meshes and foliage types to my project so here now we have less of the trees and the collision radius and shade radius has been increased but what it does it decreases the value of how, how many of palm trees that you will have based on their distances away from each other and all the other components that I have included and now you can see that there's some sand debris mixed in and there's really not a good transition that goes between those two textures but uh, what I'm going to do next is scroll down and look for another foliage type. 
And this one right here is actually the same debris too. So before we add anything else, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix the three different types of the textures that I have for this material, which we have the global, the macro, and the closest view of the texture. And I'm gonna create a blend overlay and I try to play over a couple things. So here is, we have the hard light and I think I end up going with the blend overlay instead. And what I was trying to do is just to continue the repetition of the original dunes and texture. So that way it has those waves coming in the same direction as the other sand. So you can see that it worked. However, it changed the color to something else and uh, it's a little bit reddish on a tone or the tint color i'm not 100 percent sure how i can ch change that yet uh, i haven't really gotten to that part but it does uh, created something that what i was looking for which was the transition blend and the only difference is that now it's not as wide as the other dunes material that you can see that the pattern formation is not exactly the same so maybe down the road i can actually increase the size of the texture on one of the values and match it up or uh, we'll see what else i can do with it uh, i would like to definitely change the color of it to something else but uh, as of right now what i'm doing is using some of my alpha brushes for a painting, I am simply repainting that dunes over in certain areas of that material texture that I've just edited. And it doesn't actually look bad at all. Once you start mixing it together, and just one thing you want to avoid is that part of the blending where one texture looks blurry and it's not fully colored. Uh, when you do that by hand, uh, just have to keep in mind that uh, certain areas need to be went over multiple times if you're using like alpha brushes because it still has, even if the fall off of the brush is set to zero, it still has that transition and it's not fully uh, changed, has a transition or a smooth transition between different layer materials. Uh, therefore, that's why I am adding quite a lot of different layers information in general for creating a landscape of my desire. Unfortunately, it's very limited <laughs> due to shader compiling, but we'll have to see uh, what we can do to avoid further issues with that. But here is another foliage type and it's fern 01 and i previously worked with other ones where it's listed as fern 02 3 and 4 and now i'm in the game testing this out and it looks pretty good but in the previous project that i worked on that is no longer in development or has been put on the side I had four different type of fern styles and it would spawn different type of ferns. So I'll have to fix all of that later in the series. And there's going to be more vegetation added to the fern. Uh, but as of right now, it's only using, I think, like four or five different grass types or meshes that I related to fern. And I'm only going to use one landscape material instead of using four like I did pre in the previous project and the reason I was doing that is because it actually looked very random and not repetitive on the texture part but did not count the fact that it costs a lot on memory and doing the compiling the shaders of all these other textures so I'll have to use all of my foliages under one particular 
foliage type, at least for this level. And now I'm going to go ahead and choose another layer material. I have uh, leaves, I will have some jungle roots, and here we have a banana tree foliage box. And that one actually is used as a procedural foliage, not as a grass type. But before I do go any further with the landscape, I want to show you quickly how the seaweed works, because I've mentioned it, but I didn't really do anything with it. And we have seaweed 01. So if I were to spray the landscape, uh, this is the seaweed 01. Also have 02, 03. And then the seaweed 04 is in development. And of course, once I paint this as a brush, I can just resimulate my seashells and then they will no longer spawn on the grass. But this video is coming to an end. I'm almost at my 30 minute mark here. I will be showing you how to create a location for your game project. And it's going to be a sunken ship. That's going to be in uh, part two of the video. So stay tuned, guys, if you liked it. All right, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think and what should I add to this island world that I'm creating. And as always, I want to thank everybody for watching my YouTube channel. Thank you for all the new subscriptions. Uh, it looks like my YouTube channel has doubled on the subscribers since my last video that I've uploaded. And I will try to upload now a little bit more frequently than I have been in the past uh, summer. But as the summer ends, I'll be at home more often and I'll have more time to post these videos. And I'll have more coming in. And of course, for the playlist, you can still check out my videos. If you were to go to my playlist under Unreal uh, Creating Video Game using Unreal Engine 4 with 83 videos, it's still going to be available. You can still learn quite a lot of stuff that I've uh, just shown in this video that I've pulled from there on creating pretty much all the foliage and setting up my materials and things like that um, that I go over in this playlist. But other than that, you will see a new playlist dedicated to creating video games using Unreal Engine. And it's going to be having uh, one video as of right now. And then uh, the follow-up of that is coming out later today as well for the part two. Until next video, guys.